G'day. Here's a little puzzle about dots on a circle. What I've drawn here is 15 dots in a circle. Eight of them are blue, seven of them are green. And I've copied this initial arrangement three times. And I want to play this puzzle three times on that arrangement. I should double check these arrangements the same. Uh, for example, these two are go green, green, blue, green, blue, blue, green, blue, green, green, blue, blue, green, blue, blue. Yes, those two are the same. And you can check those two are the same as well. All three arrangements on the board right now are the same because I'm going to play a game three times. What's the game? The game is I'm going to erase dots. In fact, I'm going to erase consecutive dots. One's going to be blue and one's going to be green and they're going to be in that order in the clockwise sense. Because if I go around the circle clockwise, I want to erase a pair of consecutive dots, one blue followed by one green clockwise. Right, for example, what I mean by that, let's do it. On this one, I'm going to choose, oh, there's blue, there's followed by green. There's a pair of consecutive dots in the clockwise sense, blue first, green second. I'm just going to erase them. Great. And I'm going to keep doing that, going around the circle, uh, blue, green. Oh, blue, green. I'll choose those ones. In the clockwise sense, blue came first, then green. In fact, my circle's getting a bit sort of gappy now. I can imagine these were a circle because I could actually now say, oh, if I go around, blue, green are now consecutive. Let me erase those ones. All right. Uh, another blue-green pair. Uh, let's go down here. Blue-green. There's a blue-green pair that's consecutive. Uh, blue-green, if I go around. Blue-green, consecutive. Getting a bit, bit sparse, this circle. But now I can see if I keep going around. Blue-green. Those two are now consecutive in a clockwise sense. Blue-green. And keep going around. Blue-green. And one dot survived. And that makes sense, because I'm taking away a, a, a blue dot and a green dot every single time. Equal number of dots are being survived, are being taken away as they go along. Therefore, the one extra blue dot will survive. In this case, it happens to be this one extra blue dot. There will always be one blue dot that survives. All right, so let's play it again. Let's play the game again. Um, I'll make different choices along the way. So this time, let me do uh, blue-green. Maybe I'll race this one right away. Blue-green. Uh, blue-green. Uh, maybe I'll do this one. Blue-green. Blue green. Uh, I choose this one. Blue green. Although let me be like, be like keep opening up here. Blue green. That's one great big pair of consecutive dots now. Blue green. What else can I do? Oh, blue green. Uh, blue green. And now what's left? These are now consecutive. Blue green. Oh, oh. I think that's the same dot. Whoops. Let's do it in, in bright color. Hmm. I think that was uh, this dot here. This dot here. Hmm. Now we're starting to wonder, if I play the game again, making different choices again, is that blue dot going to survive? Let's find out. Let's do it. Blue, green. I'll try to make different choices. What choices did I not make before? Um, I'll start here. Blue, green. Uh, okay. Blue, green. Maybe I'll do that one. Goodbye. Uh, blue, green. Maybe I'll do these two. Blue, green. Clockwise sense that order. Got it. Blue, green. Oh, I'll get rid of these ones. Blue, green. Blue, green. Blue, green. Let's get rid of those ones. Blue, green. Uh, I'll go this way. Blue is now next to green. They can go. And going this way, this blue is next to that green. It's the same dot again. Hmm. Hmm. There's the mystery. So, so, if you were to draw a circle with N green dots, well, let's do that in green, N green dots, whoo, smudgy, N green dots, and N plus one, one more blue dot than green, so if I get the right color marker, N plus one, arrange N plus one blue dots and N dots in a circle, actually draw it out, make yourself several copies of that diagram so you can play the same game on the same arrangement, does the same blue dot survive every single time? Hmm, if so, why? Why? And even better yet, if you draw another arrangement of n plus one blue dots and n green dots, could you predict beforehand which blue dot's going to survive? Okay, there's a mathematical mystery. Okay, here's a sum of three terms, a plus b plus c. There's actually two ways I could place parentheses around this sum so that I'm only ever adding two things at a time. For example, I could add a and b together first, get an answer, and then take that answer and then add c. There, I was only adding two things at each stage there. Or I could say to myself, no, 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 do this. Work out b plus c first, get that answer, I was adding two things, and now go a plus that answer, again adding two things. And that's it. There's two ways I can arrange parentheses around that sum of three, so I'm only ever adding two things at a time. Two ways. 
Things get more interesting if I do a sum of four terms. A plus B plus C plus D. How many ways could I arrange parentheses around that? So I'm only ever adding two things at a time. Well, here's one way. I could do A plus B, that answer plus C, and then add D. There's one way. Or I could do, oh, actually, I could change this a little bit. I could do uh, A uh, B plus C. So I could do B plus C first, then you go A plus that answer, take that answer, and then add D. Two ways. Or maybe I could leave the adding A at the end and do the same thing over here. I could do uh, B plus C first, take that answer and add D, take uh, that answer, A plus it. Beautiful. Or I could do A plus uh, variation here, uh, B plus C plus D. This will have me add C and D first, then B plus that answer, then A plus that answer. Great. Four ways. There is actually a fifth way. It's a little bit sneaky. I could do equally nested parentheses. For example, I could do A plus B and C plus D. Do these equally nested. Now, it looks like I'm doing something funny there, but the general rule is if you've got equally nested parentheses, do them one at a time. Most people go left to right, some people go right to left, doesn't matter, just do them one at a time. In which case, I'm doing that sum once, then I'm doing that sum, a sum of two things, and then I take those two answers and again adding those two things. I'm only ever adding two things at a time. And you can check there's no other way. There are five ways to arrange parentheses around a sum of uh, four terms. So here's your challenge. Challenge number one. Show me that there are actually 14 ways to arrange parentheses around a sum of five terms. 14 ways. If you're really feeling gutsy, figure out how many ways there are to arrange a sum around, uh, arrange parentheses around a sum of six terms. What with the next number in the sequence? In fact, going a little bit down a bit, I could say, um, if I just had a sum of two terms, there isn't much to do. Let's count that as almost only one way to handle that. Just leave as it is. That's fine. And it could be a little bit strange. If I had a sum of just one term, which is not much of a sum, it's just one term, there isn't much to do as well. Maybe we'll say there's only one thing to do. Leave it be. All right, so what I've got here is the parentheses numbers. One, one, two, five. I claim the next one's 14. Show me all 14 ways. What's the next parentheses numbers? Whoa, one, one, two, five, 14. Hmm, what is it? Actually, let's make that previous puzzle a little more abstract. How many ways could I write down just sets of parentheses? For example, if I want to write down one set of parentheses, I could just write that. And that would be valid and good. I mean, for example, I can't do a, a right bracket first and then a left bracket. That would make no sense. So there's one valid way to write down one set of parentheses. So how many valid ways are there write down, to write down two sets of parentheses? Okay. Well, I could do something like this. Uh, there's one way. Or I could do something like this. Okay, okay. And what makes these valid? Well, I'm going to make sure I don't ever close a parenthesis. I don't ever write down a right bracket too soon. For example, I'm going to see that this right bracket does close that left bracket, and this right bracket closes that left bracket. And here, this right bracket closes that one. This, one, this right one closes that left bracket. Everything's fine. Nothing's closing too soon. And you can check there's two ways to write uh, down two sets of parentheses in a valid manner. Okay. Three sets of parentheses. How many ways can I write those down? Well, I could do something like this. I could just write left, 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 right, right, right. That would be fine. Or I could do left, right, left, right, left, right. That would be fine. Three sets of parentheses. Uh, what else can I do? I may do something like this. Uh, left, left, right, right, and left, right. Or a variation of that. Okay, great. That's four ways. Is there a fifth way? Actually, there is. It's this. Uh, do this, do this, and then put those in parentheses. And you can check... There's actually five ways to write down an uh, 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 arrangement of three parentheses, sets of parentheses. Whoa, one, two, five. Well, okay, how many ways have I arranged four sets of parentheses? Is it 14? Well, you can check. But you might be saying, but James, hang on. This is just the same puzzles before. Of course we're getting the same numbers. One, two, five, 14. Are we? My first inclination is to say, well, of course these puzzles have to be the same. They have to give the same counts, because after all, all I'm doing is writing down arrangements of parentheses. All that happened here is I just didn't bother writing down the variable names, and I didn't bother writing down the plus signs. It has to be the same puzzle. Okay, but let's think about that. For example, let's take this very first example over here, which is A plus B added together first, then add C, and then add D. 
So if I didn't bother writing the variable names and the plus signs, I would get, what would I get? I'd get those go away, those go away, those symbols go away. Oh, I'm left with left, left, right, right. That's not on the list. That's only two sets of parentheses. Hmm. Oh, unless you say, oh, but James, 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 maybe you need to think about this having a big outer parentheses as well. In which case, put them there. Now I've got three sets of parentheses and this example here matches that first example there. Looks good. So maybe I'm right. Maybe everything is just matching up perfectly. Except, keep going. If I put parentheses around this one and then take away all the variable names and all the plus signs, this is left, 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 right, right, right. The same as before. Do the same thing here. Left, 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 right, right, right. It's the same as before. Do it here. This is left, 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 right, right, right. Yet again, the same as before. And do it finally here, and we get something different. I get left, left, right, left, right, right. Whoa, whoa. That corresponds. My initial thoughts are wrong, are wrong. These are fundamentally different from those. And the fact that we've got the same count of them, five, is now actually a little bit mind-blowing to me. Is that just a coincidence? Or is there a natural way to map these arrangements with those arrangements, a natural correspondence between those two sets? I'm really not sure. Okay, here's my fourth question for today. So many good questions. Let me go back to dots, blue dots and green dots. How many ways can I arrange n plus one blue dots and n dots in a circle? Okay, that's my question, it's a counting problem. Well, actually, this question is a little bit ambiguous. I mean, suppose I do make an arrangement of blue and green dots in a circle. Do you want to consider that arrangement kind of fixed in space, like it's a very static picture? Or would I consider, say, rotations of that diagram are all equivalent? that I can turn my circles around and consider them the same arrangement? Or would I even allow, say, flipping the diagram over? Would that be considered the same arrangement? So this question is a bit ill-defined right now. But let me answer it several ways. Let me go with the static way first. Let's assume I want to color, what, two n plus one positions. I want n, of these, n plus one of these to be blue and n of these to be green, and it's going to stay fixed in space. Up is here, that's the top dot for sure. That's always the top dot, and so on. A static picture. Oh, in which case, let me label the top dot as position 1, and then I'll go clockwise, position 2, position 3, position 4, all the way around to position uh, 2n plus 1. In which case, if I'm answering the question in a static way, so here's my static answer, answer for the static version, things don't move, I can't rotate and flip, in which case, my task is simply this. I am, out of these two n plus one positions, assigning n plus one to be color blue, that is put a blue dot there in those positions, and assigning n of these uh, positions to be green. That's where I'll put the green dots. So it's a labeling problem. I know my answer to a labeling problem. I've got two n plus one positions, two n plus one positions, of which n plus one of them is to be labeled blue, and n of them is to be labeled green. So my theory of combinatorics tells me that's the count of ways to label uh, these two n plus one positions that way. In which case, that's my static answer. If everything's fixed in space, just, just label them that way. Bingo, two n plus one factorial over n plus one factorial, n factorial is, is it. All right, but let's now loosen our thinking up a bit. So let's suppose now, no, 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 there's not a clear label. What, what is dot number one, what's dot number two? That is, I will now allow for, say, just rotations. I'll do rotations. That any one arrangement, if I rotate at one spot, it's still considered the same. If I rotate at two spots, it'll be considered the same. Three spots, four spots, doesn't matter how many spots I can rotate it, it'll be considered the same. Oh, I can rotate up to two n plus one spots. There's actually two n plus one rotations of any given diagram that would all be considered the same. So if I'm doing my rotation answer, if I'm allowing for rotations, so allow rotations, I should write the full word out, but if I allow rotations, in which case, oh, uh, I am off by a factor of 2n plus 1. All 2n plus rotations will be the same, considered the same, in which case the static answer is off by a factor of 2n plus 1. My new answer will be, I need a little bit more space, this answer adjusted by a factor of 2n plus 1. Bingo, there's my rotation answer. But let me just uh, rewrite that because the top line is really 2n plus 1 factorial, that's 2n plus 1 times the rest of the things going down, that's 2n plus 1 times 2n times 2n minus 1 blah, 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 down, 2n factorial, there it is, 
cancel, 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 in which case my rotation answer, if it's even gonna fit on the board, is two n factorial on n plus one factorial, n factorial. So there's my static answer in my very bad board technique, and there is my rotation answer. Actually, I like the rotation answer. There's something really curious about the rotation answer. This is my true question number four for today. Let's look at this rotation answer. If I consider rotations equivalent, his rotations are considered equivalent. I think this formula is very interesting. Put in n equals one, and you'll get two factorial over uh, two factorial, one factorial, that's equal to one. Put in n equals two, you'll get what? Uh, four factorial over uh, three factorial, two factorial. Uh, that is uh, 24 divided by six, that's, uh, that's uh, four divided by two is two. Put in n equals three, you'll get six factorial over uh, four factorial, uh, three factorial. Uh, six factorial divided by four factorial, that's six times five divided by three factorial is five. Check me, put in n equals four and you get 14. One, two, five, 14. Those numbers again. And in fact, if you follow the convention that zero factorial is zero, put in n equals zero, you get zero factorial over one factorial, zero factorial, zero factorial over one factorial, zero factorial is one. 1, 1, 2, 5, 14. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, here's the diagram I started with at the very beginning of today. It was a puzzle on this arrangement of 15 dots, uh, eight blue, seven green. And the game we were playing was, go looking clockwise, look for a consecutive pair of a blue dot followed by a green dot, and just erase it. And then look clockwise again, look for a consecutive pair of a blue and a green, and erase it. Do it over and over again until one single blue dot survives. And guess what? Each and every single time, it was that blue dot right there that survives. So there's something special about that blue dot right there. What is special? Okay, so, so here it goes. I'm going to give it away. Think of these dots as charged particles. Think of every blue dot as positive one charge. Blah, 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 plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. And think of every green dot as negatively charged. Negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. Now what is special about that location there in this diagram of charged particles? Well, if I look here and I move clockwise, let me actually march around the diagram looking at strings of charged particles. For example, I could go say the first four long. I could do blue, blue, green, blue, 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 green, blue. So that little string there, this string of four has total charge of positive, 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 and negative. That has a charge of plus two. That's a net positive charge. Or if I actually walk along the string, say, maybe I'll go a little bit further. Uh, maybe I'll start here and go, I know, up to there. That would be a string of, where is it? My marker's getting confusing. Blue, blue, green, sorry. Blue, blue, green. Blue, blue, green, green. Blue, blue, green, green. And what's the net positive charge there? Uh, plus, 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 four pluses and three negatives. Oh, I've got a total charge of plus one. In fact, it doesn't matter what string of char particles you do from that starting special location, the net charge of any string of particles you do is always going to be positive, absolutely positive. String of just one by itself, positive one. String of the first two particles, positive two. First three, ch total charge, positive one. First four, we did that one, total charge of positive two. So the total net charge of any string of particles starting there, moving clockwise, I claim is always positive. And check me on that, there's a lot to check there. It's always positive. And that's not true of any other blue dot in that picture. Whoa, whoa, for example, for example, I can see this blue dot gets into trouble right away. If I do this little string of two there, positive plus negative, up, oh, not a positive charge. That little substring there doesn't have total positive charge. Or this one is also in trouble. Uh, oh, right there, I've got zero charge between those two. However, maybe I start here, it actually gets in trouble by the time you get down to there. This substring has a total net charge of zero. 
Only this blue dot has the property that any string of particles starting with it and moving clockwise, no matter where you choose to stop, will have total positive charge. That's what I'm going to call special. I think that's very special. I'll call that a special blue dot. So here's my definition. A blue dot is special, is special if every string of particles clockwise from it has net positive charge, has net positive charge. Okay, very scrawly handwriting, but hopefully you just heard me what I said. The words are, uh, are clear enough in my, in my speaking rather than my writing, which is atrocious. All right, so we have identified this surviving dot in playing the solitaire game is actually special in this, set, in this sense. Whoa. I claim, no matter what arrangement of our blue and green dots you have, if you have n plus one blue dots, and you have n green dots, you always have one more blue dot than green dot, then I claim your diagram is sure to have one and precisely one, not two, not three, not zero, exactly one special blue dot. And I claim when you play the solitaire game, that is the dot that survives each and every time. Whoa, whoa. So I've got several things to prove now. I just made some wild claims there. So first of all, result number one. In any diagram of n plus one blue dots and n green dots, I claim there's at least one special blue dot. My second result, result number two I need to prove. I claim in any diagram of n plus one blue dots and n green dots, there can't be two or more special dots. Which case, that leaves the option of only one. One special blue dot in any diagram like this. Okay, let me prove that, let me prove that. So we'll do it in stages. Um, the second thing I just claimed is actually a bit easier to understand. So let me do the second uh, claim first. Let's prove that. I'm gonna cl I claim any diagram of n plus one blues and n greens cannot have two or more special blue dots. So this is all under the assumption that the number of blues is always one more than the number of greens. All right, suppose I have such a diagram of dots. So here's a diagram of dots. Do, 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 do. And suppose I have at least two of them are special, two or more special. All right, just select two of those special dots, any two you like. Maybe this one turns out to be special, and maybe this one turns out to be special. There could be more special dots, but let's just focus on those two. Well, because this dot here is special, any string from it has net positive charge, in which case this string from it right here, all the way just up to that one, has net positive charge. So it's charge here, the net charge of those dots there in that string is at least positive one at least positive one. By the same token, this dot is special, which means any string from it, in particular this string of particles from it, going clockwise, actually has total positive charge as well. Its charge has to be at least positive one. Which means the charge of all the dots in total on the circle is at least plus one, plus one. It's at least positive two. All particles in that circle, according to this, must have charge at least two. That's not possible. That can't happen. Because I've got n plus one positive charges in that circle and n negative charges in the circle. I know all the particles in that circle add up to a positive charge of just plus one, not positive two. Impossible. You cannot have two or more special dots in a circle. Great. All right, so every circle, every arrangement of this many dot, blue and green dots has either zero or one special dot. And we proved it can't be two or more. That proves it can't be two or more. So let me now prove the first result. Every arrangement of this many dots, blue and green, must have at least one special uh, blue dot. Here goes. How am I going to prove that? All right, here goes. So the way to do that is to play the solitaire game on it. Suppose I do have an arrangement of n plus one blues and n greens in a circle. Play the solitaire game. You know it's going to end up with one final blue dot somewhere. All right, so that's the game. Now. Undo the game. Undo the game. Let's put those consecutive blue-green pairs back. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I put those pairs back. Now, right now, this is not a very uh, complicated diagram. There's one dot in it, and right now, every string from that dot is positive. So this dot is actually special right now in a diagram of one dot in a circle. Not very exciting. Now let's undo the solitaire. That means I removed, uh, just before I got there, a pair of uh, uh, blue, a, a blue-green pair in that consecutive order. I removed a blue going clockwise, followed by green, somewhere from that diagram. So I must have come from a stage like that, 
to get down to that single dot. Look what happens now. I now have this string here of one dot, or I have this string of two blue dots, or I have this string of two blues and a green, two blues and a green. So right now, oh, in this diagram, in the circle of three dots, positive charge, total positive charge, total positive charge, this dot's still special. All right, let's put back the previous, previous pair of blue-green I took away. Um, now, remember they're consecutive, so they, wouldn't, like, they weren't going to be split up by, by you know, blue here and green there. They must have been something like in a space, blue and green. So what's changed now? Is this dot still special when I put back that previous pair? Well, the first string is still that. The second string is still that. The third string is this. Oh, the next string I get is this. I've got the one I had before and it just sneaks in that first blue dot I put back. And then the fifth string I could possibly have is that, uh, what I had before, with the blue-green pair added in. Blue, green. All right, so this is positive charge. That's positive. That's total positive charge. That's still total positive. And of course, if I add another blue dot to something that's pre previously positive, it'll certainly stay positive. I added a plus one to it. And here, I took this previous string I had, which I knew was positive, and I added a plus one and a negative one. I've added no charge to it, so it'll still be positive. But as you can see now, as I insert my pairs back, like maybe I've got a, a, a blue-green here, some of my strings will change. Some won't. This string doesn't change. This string doesn't change. But this next first string that changes is by adding a positive charge. So if a previous string was positive and I add another positive charge to it, it'll still be positive. If I then keep going to the next string, take the string I had before, add a positive charge and then a negative charge to it, while it's adding no charge at all, it'll still be positive. And thereafter, I've actually only adjusted the strings by adding really no extra charge to it. Anything that was positive before stays positive by reinserting a blue, uh, a blue green pair. So this dot is special at the get go of doing this process backwards. It's staying special throughout the entire process. And then when I finally get back to my original diagram, whatever it was, who knows, I can't remember what my diagram was. I'm probably making, doing this incorrectly. Uh, blue green, whatever that diagram was, it's staying special. My solitaire game proves that the final dot you get in playing solitaire was actually a special blue dot in the original diagram. So yes, every arrangement of n plus one blue dots and n green dots has at least one special dot, that dot that survives in playing solitaire, and can't have two or more special blue dots. Therefore, every diagram has exactly one special blue dot. And you can identify that blue dot. It's the dot that wins the solitaire game. Everything is falling into place. This is looking good and explains the solitaire game. Every solitaire game must end up at that special blue dot. Wow. Okay, so we've just proved that any arrangement of n plus one blue dots and n green dots in a circle has a special marker within that circle, that location of that special blue dot. And in fact, if I rotate this picture, it doesn't matter, that, that marker will move with it. So this doesn't care about rotations. So we know then, actually, there are two n factorial over n plus one factorial n factorial are uh, such diagrams not caring about the rotations. We have that many arrangements of that many blue, blue and green dots with a special marker within them. Okay, but because we have a special marker, that means I could actually unravel the circle, just start at the marker and unravel it, which means I could actually write this as a sequence of dots because I know what it is. That's the special marker. The first marker is the special one. That would be, if I unravel it, I can make this linear. Blue, blue, uh oh, green, blue, blue, Okay, how am I going to do this? This is not very easy for me to do. Blue, blue, green, 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 blue, green, blue, green, gets me there. Blue, blue, green, blue, blue, green, blue, green, uh, sorry, uh oh, blue, blue, green, yes, blue, green, green, blue, green, green. All right, there it is. I can unravel it. I can unravel that into a chain like that. Great. So that is a, I know exactly what that is. I'm saying the first dot special. I know how to wrap that back into a circle. Grand. But this linear line of n plus 1 blue dots and n green dots has the property that the total charge from any string from this left 
actually is positive. Total charge is positive. Now let me do something sneaky. Let me erase that beginning first dot. Now I've got an equal number of blue and green dots. I've got N blue and N green in a line. I know the special dot's there, it's blue, and I've erased it. However, that means, oh, any string from the left here is going to have a net charge that's off by one, Could be de will, be, will be down by one. I've removed a positive charge. However, all these strings were charged at least plus one, which means if I remove that first positive charge, all these strings are at least charge zero or up. They never have negative charge. Every string along here has positive or or uh, zero charge. That's positive one. That's charge zero. That's charge positive one. That's charge positive two. That's charge positive one. That's charge uh, zero. Is this right? Yep, I think it's right. So on. I'll never go into the negatives. Never go into negative charges. So now I can actually say, oh, oh, I can think of any string of n blue and n green, sorry, any row of n blue and n green dots like this with a property that all the strings coming from the left have either zero or positive charge really came from a diagram where they got wrapped back around, put the special blue dot in the front, one of these diagrams. So actually, the number of ways to arrange n blue dots and n green dots in a row so it has this special charge property, the charges from the left are never negative, is given by that formula. There are that many ways to arrange n dots, blue dots and n green dots in a row so they're always having charge zero or positive reading from the left. Great, great, great. The reason I love that, because they're parentheses. They are parentheses. Let me do something crazy. Let me do something insane. Here goes, here goes. I'm going to think of the blue dots and the green dots as parentheses. I'm going to think of blue as a left parenthesis and I'm going to think of yellow, green, sorry, as a right parenthesis. If I do that, look what happens. Uh, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. Beautiful, beautiful. Is that a valid sequence of parentheses? <laughs> that's a complicated one, that's a complicated one. Um, well, it's n sets of parentheses, because I had n blue and n green, so I've got n left brackets and n right brackets. Uh, that's valid. Uh, you see, that's all valid there, this is valid there, and yes, actually, that's valid as well. Everything here is valid. And I knew it's going to be, logically. Because we said, as you go read from uh, left to right, you'll never go to negative charge. That means for any set of green dots you have, there's enough blue dots to the left of them, so you actually cancel out those green dots. You never go down to the negatives. That means a right bracket is never closing too soon. There's enough left brackets to the left of what you're seeing there to never get you down to the negatives. Every right bracket has enough left brackets to the left of it, so it's actually valid. Yes, this must be a valid arrangement of uh, left and right brackets because I know I've got a valid arrangement of, of positive and negative charges that I never go into the negatives. All my right brackets can close properly as they should. Wow, wow. Okay, I mean, let's this, this just really make this clear. Let me write out um, all five ways to arrange three sets of parentheses and see it as all five ways to arrange three blue dots and three green dots. Let me do that. Um, it's going to take me a while, so let me just uh, let me, give me a moment. Be right back. Okay, I did it. Here's all five ways to arrange uh, three positively charged particles and three negatively charged particles. So for each of these rows, if I look at particles just reading from the left, I'll get a net charge of at least zero, maybe positive. I'll never go into negative charge reading strings from the left in any one of these particular arrangements. Great, there they are. Now, are these the parentheses numbers? Let's check. Remember, this was a left parenthesis. Left, left, left. This is a right, 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 right. There's one valid way to arrange three sets of parentheses. Uh, left, left, right, left, right, right. There's another way. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Uh, left, left, right, right, left, right. And left, left, right, left, right, right. And bingo. You can double check, look back. There's all five ways, all five valid ways to arrange a set of three parentheses, three, three sets of parentheses. There we go. That's it, great, we've got a lovely correspondence. So I want to count how many ways to arrange uh, n sets of parentheses like this. I have to count the number of ways to arrange n charged particles, n positive, n negative ones like this, which is given by this formula. Everything here is hanging together. 
at least everything about charged particles, formulas, and these types of parentheses. Parentheses of type 2. What about those parentheses numbers of type 1? Okay, so let's see if I can get a correspondence going there. Um, let, me, let me try this example. Let's, let's do it specifically with this final line. This example right there, which corresponds to that arrangement parentheses in the abstract type 2 sense. Now let's get the uh, more concrete type 1 sense, where I want actually some variables and plus signs and all the parentheses there. The way to do that is to reinterpret these positive and negative dots. So I'm going to reinterpret uh, negative charged particles and positive charged particles and do them as follows. I'm going to write the symbol, well actually I'll do a left parenthesis again, left bracket for all the blue dots. But for the green dots, I'm going to do a plus sign. In which case, I'm going to read an arrangement like this as uh, left parenthesis, left bracket, plus sign, left bracket, plus sign, plus sign. And you look at that and say, whoa, that looks weird. That looks weird. In fact, it looks like it's missing stuff. In fact, it really does look like it's missing its variable names. I, can see, I mean, you just feel compelled to want to put variable names in that. In fact, let's do that. Let's see what logic tells me where the variable names have to be. I mean, if I have a left bracket followed by a plus sign, I mean, that won't happen in any algebraic expression unless there's a variable name in there. So whenever I see a left bracket and a plus sign, put a variable name there. There's an A. Do that. Uh, left bracket, unless there's a B right there. I might get my order of my names wrong, but it doesn't matter. I'll get, I'll get some variable names. Um, that's it. Anything else that logic tells me where a variable name has to be? Well, I know in algebra, you'll never have a plus sign immediately followed by a plus sign. You have to have a variable name in there. So there's got to be a variable name in there. C. All right. Logic. What else is telling me? Well, I know in algebra, I never just end with a random plus sign let floating. There's got to be another variable at the end there. So if you have a, just a plus sign and then a blank, you know you need another variable name in there. So there must be a fourth one. D. And in fact, four makes sense. If I had three plus signs, I knew there was going to be four variable names. Okay, so that must be all the variable names. Great. This still looks weird. Now, does logic tell me where uh, the right parentheses must be? Because I've got no right parentheses right now. There's got to be in there. Now, remember, we're playing the game. We're only ever adding two terms at a time. And I think logic is going to tell me where those right parentheses just have to be. No choice. In fact, if I read from the right, let's look at the first left bracket. There's the first left bracket. It has to have a matching right bracket somewhere over here. Where must it be? Well, if we're only adding two terms at a time, B plus C, oh, there's two terms, I've got to stop there, it must be there. The matching right bracket with that left bracket has to be right there. No choice, pure logic. If I keep going now to the next left bracket, there it is, where must its matching right bracket be? Again, I'm only ever adding two terms at a time. I've got A plus something, oh, that that's, must be it, that's two terms. Its matching right bracket must be there. And then finally, go back to uh, the next left bracket over here. Um, only adding, adding two terms. I've got all this is one term right now, plus a D. Its matching right bracket must be there. No choice. Logic tells me where the variables have to be. Logic tells me where the right bracket has to be. Logic then tells me what this expression has to be. There it is. And look, it's a set of valid parentheses around a sum of four terms. Four variables, three plus signs, three sets of parentheses. A little bit annoying here because I do actually have a beginning left bracket and a big ending right bracket, which makes sense because I do have to have a positive particle at the begin beginning and I do have, a, have to have a negative particle at the end, no choice about that. But we could say, well, okay, they're kind of optional. You can say, well, let's have invisible versions of that. Bingo. Now that's truly like something I wrote down earlier today. And if you did this for all five of these examples, you'll have all five ways to arrange parentheses around four variables. Four variables, three plus signs, uh, two sets of parentheses. Whoa, our ends are a little bit off here. We've got a little mismatch of endness right here, so we've got to be careful about that. But nonetheless, each of these examples here is a code for parentheses numbers of type one. We actually write in the variable names. In fact, if you want to be really clear about it, it is this formula. If you've got an expression of n plus signs, n plus signs, that means you've got n plus one variables, but n plus signs, then this is the number of ways to put parentheses around them. That's it. That's it. So the number of ways to arrange parentheses around a sum of n plus one terms, put the thing n plus signs, is that formula. Bingo, bingo, bingo. So now we have a perfect correspondence between these and these going via the charged particle diagrams, and they're all given by this one formula here. All four questions hang together, kind of right there. We've got it. 
is just marvelous.